there are so many graphics cards in the market which makes it much harder for beginners to pick the right graphics card for 1440p resolution and that's why i made this video i will rank the best and worst 1440p gpus in the entire market and the link to my top picks for 1440p graphics cards will be down below in the video description with the latest pricing and availability my name is valentino that being said let's start the first question you may have is what makes a graphics card 1440p capable and also what is my ranking based off well i'll rank 1440p brand new graphics cards only that can achieve at least 60 plus fps on average in the most high demanding titles out there at 1440p and also they must have at least 12 weeks of vram except for one gpu which i will be talking about in just a moment and this ranking will be based off price or performance primarily Primarily for gaming but also overall performance in different type of applications. So before you hate on the comment section, this is not just based on pure gaming performance. It is based on overall performance and also price to performance. The first GPU is the RX 7600XT and this one is going to the normal tier. Nothing too crazy when it comes to gaming, I mean it performs pretty well when it comes to 1440p and you can expect around 67 plus FPS on average in those high demanding games I've mentioned before, high to ultra settings with no upscaling on. But for a cheaper price, you can get a GPU that's actually faster in terms of pure gaming performance. And the only thing that I do like about this graphics card is that it has AV1 encoding, which might be interesting for you if you do any type of streaming. And it also comes with 16 gigs of VRAM, which might be ideal depending on your workloads. But for the most part for gaming, 12 gigs of VRAM is going to be absolutely fine. Now, the next one is the RX 6700 XT and this one is quite interesting because in terms of price or performance it's actually pretty good and it's going for around $300 so it's cheaper than the 7600 XT and will perform the exact same on average for gaming at 1440p but for around the same price you can get the upgraded version of this GPU so you can either save 10 bucks and get more performance or spend the extra $10 get the same level of gaming performance but get a newer architecture in the RX 7600 XT or AV1 encoding or 16 gigs of VRAM if that's going to help you out. With the next one, we have the RX 6750 XT, which is the upgraded version from the 6700 XT. So it's basically the 6700 XT on steroids and it's about 6% faster on average and it has the same price tag. And that's why I would highly recommend you buying this one instead of the 6700 XT or RX 7600 XT if you want the best price or performance for gaming. This one is definitely my favorite and in my opinion, the best GPU for around $300 for gaming and that's why this is going to be my first graphics card going into my god tier. With the next one we have one from Nvidia in the RTX 4060 Ti 8GB version and this is the only 8GB version graphics card in this list and it's the only one that I will be putting into my trash tier. Yes, I do not like this graphics card and I would never recommend you buying it even for just gamers. This one is about $75 more expensive than the RX 67 50 XT and will achieve basically the same level of gaming performance. So you are basically spending $75 more getting the same level of gaming performance and on top of that you are getting 8 gigs of VRAM compared to 12 gigs of VRAM. So you are downgrading your VRAM which is going to be terrible if you want a future proof 1440p gaming system. I mean 8 gigs of VRAM is already not enough for some games at 1440p and I'm talking about high demanding titles on high to ultra settings. So it doesn't make any sense in my opinion to spend the extra $75 on this Nvidia GPU and that's why it's not even the too expensive tier. I just believe that it's trash and the only reason why I put it in this video is because it has a decent level of 1440p gaming performance. I mean it performs the same as the 6750 XT so around 70 plus FPS on average in high demanding titles which is pretty good but still you get 8 gigs of VRAM and it's too expensive so I would never recommend you buying this system even if you want to do gaming or content creation just know. In my opinion this is a terrible one but of course you can believe whatever you want and also if you have around 400 dollars to spend on a gpu because by the way this graphics card is 375 dollars you should get the rx 6800 which is the next one on the list and this one will be able to achieve 80 plus fps on average in those high demanding titles at 1440p resolution and it comes with 16 gigs of VRAM, which is double the amount compared to the rtx 4060 ti 8 gigabyte version so for 360 dollars which is less than the rtx 4060 ti 
high 8 GB version, you can expect 16% faster rasterized performance when it comes to gaming. So there's no reason to go with the 4060 Ti 8GB version and this one, the RX 6800 is going into my good tier and the only reason why it's not going into the god tier is because it's not the cheapest one out there and it's also not the fastest one. So it is pretty good, I do recommend you buying it if you have around $400 to spend but it is not as good as other GPUs in this list and it's also not as cheap as other GPUs in this list. So really good GPU going into my good tier and definitely much better than the 4060 Ti 8GB version and also the 4060 Ti 16GB version which I will be talking about in just a moment but before going there I want to go with the R x 7700 XT which is basically the same graphics card as the RX 6800 in terms of the level of performance and the only thing that you get here that you don't get on the 6800 is that you get AV1 encoding and a newer architecture because this GPU is newer compared to the 6800 but I just wouldn't recommend you buying this one if you see the RX 6800 going for $360 because the 7700 XT usually goes for around $390 bucks, which is about $30 more and you are getting less VRAM as well so if your favorite games require more than 12 gigs of VRAM then the 6800 is still a much better option. So unless the RX 6800 is out of stock or much more expensive I wouldn't recommend you buying the 7700 XT. The next one is the RTX 4060 Ti 16GB version and this one is the first one going into my too expensive tier list and the reason why is because it's not as bad as the 4060 Ti 8GB version just because you get 16GB of VRAM which is much better for 1440p for both gaming, content creation and productivity work so I could see why you would pick the 4060 Ti 16GB version only if you're a content creator and you know that Nvidia works better for you otherwise if you're just looking for the best price to performance gaming graphics card I mean there are so much better GPUs out there compared to this one for example the RX 6800 that I've mentioned before which is $65 cheaper at the moment and 14% faster on average for gaming so instead of spending $425 you spend $360 and get faster performance and the same amount of VRAM. Or if you want to spend around the same price, let's say you want to spend $400, then I recommend you going with the next one on the list which is the RX 6800 XT. Now this one right now is definitely my favorite one in terms of price of performance. Usually it goes for around $450 but at the moment by the time of filming it's going for $399 which is an amazing price and it's hard not to put this one into the god tier when you see this price point because in terms of performance you are going to be achieving really high fps and you can achieve 90 plus fps on average when it comes to 1440p in the most high demanding titles so it is about 11 percent more expensive than the rx 6800 but you get 12 percent faster performance so it is slightly better in terms of price of performance and it is definitely better in terms of pure performance but of course the craziest comparison happens when you compare with the RTX 4060 Ti, both the 8GB version or the 16GB version, because the 6800 XT is about 25% faster compared to both RTX 4060 Ti's in terms of pure gaming performance, and it's only $25 more expensive than the 4060 Ti 8GB version, and it's cheaper than the 16GB version, and of course the RX 6800 XT also has 16 gigs of VRAM, so definitely one of my favorite GPUs at the moment, and that's why this one is definitely going into the god tier. Now the next one is the RX 7800 XT and this one used to be way higher on my list but as of right now seeing that the 6800 XT is going for $399 this one is definitely not going to be as high as it used to be because the 7800 XT is $70 more expensive than the 6800 XT and it has some benefits of course I mean it has a newer architecture it is also quite more power efficient so if you care about that then maybe spending the extra $70 is worth it but in terms of of pure gaming performance they are very similar and I just can't justify spending $70 more on basically the same graphics card with very minor improvement but if you have around $500 to spend I think the 7800 XT is still really good in terms of value for gaming so if you're looking for the best price to performance then the 6800 XT is definitely better but if you have around $500 to spend and you want to spend that amount then the 7800 XT might be the better option so I will put it on the good 
good tier. So not as good as the 6800 XT, but definitely this one is a pretty good GPU still. And before I move to one of the most popular Nvidia GPUs out there, I want to say that if you are finding valuable information and you are enjoying this video, subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you get to learn more about computers. Now with the next one, we have one of the most popular Nvidia gaming GPUs out there in the RTX 4070. And for the RTX 4070, I really have mixed feelings because in my opinion, it's too expensive, but also the level of performance is really good. And some people really value DLSS or the level of ray tracing performance, which is better than most AMD GPUs out there, but it's going for 520 bucks. So it's quite expensive. And even though the level of performance is great, it's not as good as other GPUs in this list, especially in terms of price or performance. So if you must have Nvidia and you have around $500 to spend, then sure, fair enough, go with the 4070. And that's why I will put it on the normal tier because I see why you would buy an RTX 4070, but I still wouldn't recommend it when we compare it with other GPUs, especially if we are talking about price or performance. With the next one, we have the RX 7900 GRE from AMD. And this one is one of the most hyped graphics cards in the entire market, at least for the past few months. And I've been recommending this graphics card. I do think that it's a pretty good graphics card, but as of right now, I believe it's an okay GPU just because the 7800 XT is quite cheaper and so is the 6800 XT. Now, if you will overclock this GPU, then it's a complete different story because you will be getting faster performance. But if you want to play with this graphics card right out of the box without tweaking anything about it, then I don't think it's as some people say. It costs $60 more than the 7800 XT, so about 12% more expensive and you get a 10% faster performance. So it is slightly worse in terms of price or performance compared to the 7800 XT. However, you pay more and you get slightly more performance. So I guess that's fair enough. And the 7900 GRE has an amazing level of performance at 1440p regardless. And that's why I will put this one into the good tier because it is nice in terms of performance, but I don't know if it's worth the extra $60 compared to the 7800 XT, let alone the $120 that you have to spend extra compared to the 6800 XT at the moment. With the next one, we have another one from Nvidia and this is the RTX 4070 Super. Now, some people love this graphics card, some people hate it. In my opinion, it is a pretty good graphics card overall and I do think that it's better than the 7900 GRE. Once again, especially if you value ray tracing or DLSS. You also get the Nvidia feature set, so it's usually better when it comes to content creation and productivity work applications for the most part. So you get a more complete graphics card. The only thing that I do not like about the 4070 Super is that it has 12 gigs of VRAM and is quite more expensive compared to the 7900 GRE. So if you need more than 12 gigs of VRAM for your favorite games or you want a more future-proof graphics card that's cheaper than the 7900 GRE is the better option. But in my opinion, the 4070 Super overall is better than the 7900 GRE because on average, it's slightly faster when it comes to rasterized gaming performance. And then of course, it is much faster if you play with ray tracing on. And on top of that, the LSS is quite important for some people, especially at 1440p resolution where Nvidia is the clear winner. Now, FSR 4 is coming soon in theory, but we don't know much about it and we don't know if it's going to be better or the same as the LSS. So I can't speculate with something that's not out in the market yet. With the next one, we have the best graphics card for 1440p resolution in terms of gaming performance from AMD in the RX 7900 XT. Now, this one is super fast and it is really fast not only for 1440p, but also for 4K resolutions. So if you want to upgrade your monitor down the line to a 4K, then this graphics card is ideal for you. It has 20 gigs of VRAM and I have no complaints when it comes to the level of performance for 1440p and 4K resolution for the price. Because yes, the price is expensive, but it's definitely not as expensive as an RTX 4080 Super or RTX 4090. So in my opinion, it's going into the God tier because it's the best of the best for 1440p. You can achieve 120 plus FPS on average in the most high demanding titles out there, high to ultra settings with no FSR on, and you're going to still achieve a really good gaming experience at 4K for a decent price. And last but not least, we have the RTX 4070 Ti Super. Now, some people really hate on me when I put this one in a high tier, but you can keep hating because I will put this one into the God tier. And some people argue that I shouldn't put it on the God tier just because the 7900 XT is about $100 cheaper and will achieve about the same level of rasterized performance. In fact, the 7900 XT is slightly faster, but you have to keep in mind that the 4070 Ti Super, once again, is better for most content creation and productivity work applications or 3D rendering applications. It has about the same level of gaming performance.
performance it also has a good amount of VRAM in 16 gigs of VRAM and you get the Nvidia feature set so you get the LSS and you get a much better level of ray tracing performance so if we take everything into consideration yes the price is higher and is slightly slower when it comes to rasterized performance but overall is the better graphics card and that's why it's going into my god tier even above the 7900XT but of course if you're just looking for the best price to performance GPU you just care about gaming you will not use DLSS or FSR or anything like that then the 7900XT is going to be your best option because you spend $100 less and you get the same or even faster gaming performance once again if you are not going to be using ray tracing or if you want to play with no DLSS or FSR on remember you will have the links to my favorite 1440p picks for every budget down in the video description and if you want a complete PC build around these graphics cards without bottlenecking them with the best CPU, motherboard and everything in between for 1440p. I highly recommend you watching my video on the best 1440p PC builds in the top right of the screen or down below in the video description and let me know in the comment section what you would change about this tier list that I made today because I do like when you guys hate on me for these tier lists so I will be definitely reading the comment section. Thank you guys for watching, thank you for the support and I will see you on the next one.